So, I, we're, we're family tonight. We're going to teach tonight. Get your notebooks. I got a little something I'm going to give you that my brother inspired in me. I'm going to be acknowledging two mighty uh, generals. Uh, throughout my teaching tonight, and uh, I don't plan to hold you long, but I'm going to lay some groundwork and foundation because this really is a going in conference, and, and it's no uh, guess as to what we should be talking about, teaching about this week. I think it's Kenneth Hagin that uh, kind of hipped us to the fact that, you know, if you're doing a praise and worship conference, what you think you ought to be talking about? Praise, praise and worship, amen. If pastor said we was having a money conference, which this is kind of that a little bit, you know what we would talk about nightly? Money, yeah. And so whatever we're doing, prophetic conference should have a prophetic edge to it. So I, I, I really don't feel the need to make a reputation tonight. I really want to teach to family. I want to walk and talk. And, uh, and, and I believe we'll do a little more rejoicing maybe Friday, Lord say the same. But tonight, I want to really help relative to uh, church development, amen, and, and, and what I believe God has given me as a revel revelation on how we should approach the things of God. So with that said, over the next three messages of which pastor has given me the opportunity to minister, uh, the foundational, uh, if you will, golden text, uh, text plural, people I'll be harping on, will be Zerubbabel's temple. We're going to be dealing with that over the next three days. Uh, and there were some key players in that temple. It's fun to read about Zerubbabel uh, because he uh, was a priest of, uh, of the Judah, Judean, excuse me, people, the Jewish people in the times of Babylon. And uh, anybody know that scripture? Uh, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil. Amen. When the people of God was going into 70 years of captivity, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Well, Zerubbabel was in that bunch, mama. And uh, he is credited, if you read the book of Ezra and Haggai, and we're going to talk about those guys too, he's credited with delivering those people into, amen, what would be perceived as their promised land at the time. Amen. Or their new temple. Thank you for your amen, Brother Pat. And so with that in mind, that's going to be my foundation to how I'm going to ride uh, or fly my kite over the next three messages, amen. And I believe it's gonna be a blessing of impartation into our ministries collectively, amen. I'll admit what I'm, I'm teaching, I need, amen. I think we all need a dose of this tonight. So we're gonna really walk this through, amen, and see about getting it where it, it needs to be. So with that in mind, uh, you all are all too familiar with Haggai chapter one, verse 3 through 5, uh, and the sound booth will put it on the screen, but this is a classic verse relative to church development. And then we're going to use some complementary wisdom scriptures to bring home our point from the wisdom writer himself, Brother Solomon, and I believe we're going to land well tonight. Over in Haggai chapter 1, verse number 3, the Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came through Haggai the prophet, saying, and look, look at the, the, the mentality that Haggai is trying to develop into Zerubbabel's people, who is the governor, who is leading these people out. He brings in a prophetic voice. He brings in a Haggai to help them reconcile the way they should be thinking. Amen. And, and, and he says uh, through the prophet Haggai, is it a time for your, you yourselves to live in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruin? Do y'all see that? Uh, it is as if the pastor brought in, amen, a guest pastor and, and said, listen, uh, we're going to do some church development and, and speak prophetically amen, into the people of God who have been delivered or are being delivered into their promised land and building and obtaining their new church and uh, make sure that our hearts are right and our minds are right and our dispositions are right as God has brought us in and is going to bring us into greater success, amen, now that we're in our building. Now, you do understand a new building is simply the close on the vision. Y'all have that? We were already a church. We, we didn't become a church when we got over here. 
We, you know, that's why when we would go at the other uh, site, which was an anointed venue, uh, folk got healed over there. Amen. Delivered and set free. There were mighty moves of God over there. I was a part of some of them. Amen. We didn't short, shortcut anything. Isn't that right? Amen. Your pastor preached out of uh, his soul every week to the glory of God and formulated vision. So this is simply close on it, but there, everybody say there is more. There is Amen. More. Because we, we got the seat but the seats need to be filled. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got the venue. Somebody say amen. amen. But the venue is for a reason. Yeah. That's why we have a venue. Isn't that right? And I say so humbly, I'm speaking as much to Charlotte as I am to Houston. Are y'all seeing this? All right? So please understand, this is not Pastor Rogers coming saying you, 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 you. No, I'm saying we, 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 we wherever that camera is. Are you all in here? So Haggai gives the people, uh, Zerubbabel's people, some insight on how they should be thinking now that they've gone in their new church. He said, listen, is it time for you to live in your panel houses while this house, we got our house, but while this house lies in ruin? Is it time for you to be doing that? And then he says, this is what the Lord of hosts says, Consider carefully. I like the Berean version of that. Consider carefully your ways. Now, we like to high five and talk to our neighbors, so let's not get rid of that tradition. That's, I think that has its place. Amen. Slap your neighbor, high five, and say, Consider your ways. Yeah. Yeah. Consider your ways. Consider how you're thinking. Consider your disposition. And so tonight, we're going to talk from this thought, and I will be doing over the next three days, lest the Lord change my direction, and he can. But we're going to be talking, nephew, about going in, amen, part one, two, and three. But tonight, we're going to talk about going in, and more specifically, we're going to talk about how are you handling the things of God, okay? So we're going in, but how are you? personalizing it to you. How are you handling the things of God? Everybody say, no, God is talking to me tonight. Amen. Somebody say, this message is for me tonight. Okay, so I'm not looking across the room saying to my neighbor, you need to do, you need to fix, you need to change, you need to get on fire. That's right, Pat. God is talking to, to me tonight. All right? So how are you uh, going about the things of God, or how are you handling the things of God? So with that in mind, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, amen, and let's look at verse number 1, and uh, then we're going to look at verse number 3, uh, and we're just going to really walk through this. And in this book, Solomon uh, is, is teaching the people to fear God and to keep their vows. He's teaching them character. Uh, I, I like uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 because in one verse, Pastor, you know, he tells them, when you make a vow to God, don't delay to pay it. How, how many of y'all know when we, when we make pledges in the church? We, we ought to pay our pledges, amen? And uh, that, that's actually, I think, verse number four, if, if I'm not mistaken. So he said, when you make a file, don't delay to pay it, amen? Somebody say, do what you said. Do what you said. Do what you said you was going to do. But uh, I love how it starts, Pastor, in verse number one of Ecclesiastes 5. He says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God. Good God Almighty. He said, when you go to the house of God, when you enter your new church, or you come to church, or you work on the care ministry, or you work on the sound ministry, or as these mighty men of God did today, which by the way, thank you. Thank you, man of God, for how you treated me and my family. When, when you go to pick up a pastor ghoul, all right, uh, uh, walk, walk prudently. This family business tonight, right? This is Bible study. Walk prudently. Walk, walk carefully uh, when you go to do the work of the house of God. When you're doing something uh, relative to the house of God, Solomon said, he said, look here, when you go, walk prudently. Don't walk any kind of way. Don't, in church, don't sit any kind of way. Cert, certain posture. That, that we ought to have. And the man of God up saying something, my amen ought to be coming out before he finish. I, I'm on the edge of my seat. I, I'm, I'm like the Bereans. The Bible said they received the word with gladness. Yes. Amen. And the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Give me more. Amen. What do you have to say? Yes, I believe that. $100,000, I take it. And I 
I brought another thousand tonight because the Lord healed my body and blessed me. Hallelujah. If I had to, amen, the, the God market, amen, I ought to stay right there. What you think? Amen. Right? Does it make sense to stop? No, no. We're going to raise some money this week. So he said, when you go to the house of God, walk prudently. That word prudently means carefully. He said, don't handle the things of God any kind of way. We're going to get here tonight, but when you evangelize for the church, faith technicality, don't just evangelize, evangelize by faith. faith. Believing that you receive that somebody is coming to church with you tomorrow night. Everybody say, not Sunday, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Packed house when? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. We're not postponing evangelism. Y'all was with me when I said don't postpone the blessing. Somebody say, we're not postponing evangelism. So when you come and to do the things of God, whatever you do, amen. Ecclesiastes also says, whatever your hands find to do, do it how? With all, all your might, all that you have, everything that's in you, put it in the house of God. Is that okay tonight? So this is what same Solomon says, when you go to the house of God, man of God, he teaches us to, to, to walk prudently into the house and then skip to verse number three, just the A clause of one is enough. Verse number three, he says, for a dream comes through much activity. Now we're going to work this tonight because this family business Bible study. A dream comes through much activity. Activity. Will you all put my NASB up there, Sister Diamond, that I sent back on my notes? A dream comes, thank you all so much, through much effort. Amen. Seats get filled, churches grow, television outreach, everything happens through much effort. A dream comes through, through putting your hand to the plow. And then amazing that the Bible says no man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for, what's the name of our churches? Kingdom. For the kingdom. So you can't even be in a kingdom church, amen, without putting in effort that is, watch how I say this, commiserate with the God you serve. Yeah. Effort commiserate, amen, with the, 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 the kingdom by which we live in. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, we are of a superior kingdom. And if we're of a superior kingdom, there ought to be a certain way we do the things we do. I love these uh, music ministers to, to my left because, man, when I, when I hear y'all play, it's melodious. It's in sync. You know, the bass player ain't on A flat while you in B flat. You follow where I'm coming from? Amen. Nephew and, and, and the bass player, they, they locked, in, locked in together, right? That, that's, that's, that's how we ought to do it. We ought to do it at a certain level, you know. And this is a compliment, KCOH, that, that light blue you're wearing tonight on the praise team and those black polo shirts. And oh my God, I'm serious when I say this. Those secret service-like men that met us at the airport, would you agree, Mom? It was so dynamic. I started videotaping it, Sister Biggers. I said, my God, this is how you do it. This, this, this ought to be the way that we approach the things of God. Are y'all listening to me? Our, our great uh, uh, mentor and father in the ministry said it so well. When he, when he wrote the book, or Oral Roberts wrote the, the foreword to it, Pastor Gould wrote the book, every ministry needs help. And saints, really get this tonight because your pastor cannot, everybody say cannot. cannot. Your pastor as awesome and multifaceted as he is, great mentor to me, taught me so many of things that I know to this day. He cannot do it by himself. Sheep beget sheep. Shepherds shepherd sheep. But you have a responsibility. Boy, we're not going to get through all this tonight. You have a responsibility to beget sheep. You have a responsibility to turn this into a, a forest service vehicle. I'm talking about we got to meet Saturday nights now at 6. Because it's crazy. Yeah. You know, his nephew getting up preaching Saturday night. Pat, sometimes, Pat, you know, he'll be, so people can't calculate him. Is he coming tonight? Oh, we don't know. You just, you just go. Right? Folk can't time it. And then three services on Sunday. Right. Are you all listening to me? Yes. 
and then, no, we're going to celebrate this campus, but then expansion and growth and, and, and spreading out because if Jesus is coming back real soon and your pastor is the rapture man, what do you think this church ought to be characteristic of? Soul winning. But, but a dream comes, though, through much effort. Nothing just happens. Joshua said that you would observe to do. Somebody say, you got to observe to do. But now, how are you handling the holy things as a revelation pastor? Because one of the things that the average pastor runs up against, and I'm sure, Bishop, you could, you could probably relate to this. I know we all can relate to it. It is something that Dean Rackey said, and that was the aching void of underachievement. And, and what is that aching void of underachievement? It's, it's when you got great expectation, you're looking forward to something, you've worked so hard, you have laid the groundwork, you have worked night and day, you've put the much effort in, but there is that lacklusterism, that underachievement that makes you say, man, golly, I just thought after we did all this, yeah. we would have, am I doing okay tonight, say cool? We would have had... Yeah. At least that. At least that. Come on. Y'all see where I'm coming from? Yes. I, I just thought with all this effort, with all, all of this painstaking, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, because the Bible says a dream comes with much effort. Are y'all listening to me? No, the blessing works through you. Amen. And I just thought with all the effort that I put in, I would see sweeping numbers of people, someone would say. A pastor could say that. Or I would see, you know, 20 people being baptized this Saturday, 200 people next Saturday, yeah. and 2,000 people after that. And what's the Bible precedent? Because 3,000 people join the church in one day. In one day. And if 3,000 join in one day, y'all, we ought to be baptizing at least 30 on one Saturday. Come on. Even if we plouse back the faith, if we just say just a little less faith, Cassie, we ought to be at least baptizing 30 people every Saturday. Am I doing okay tonight? Yes, but the dream comes with much effort. It's not going to come because we got a new building. It's not coming because we got cafes. It don't, it don't. It do not come because we got beautiful first ladies on the front row that other dainty young ladies could model themselves after. It does not come because we have all the facilities and security. We got the air pieces. It don't come because of that. Amen. Anybody could buy air piece in a CB. The dream comes through much effort. Through much effort. Come on comes to somebody putting their hand to the plow and saying, not only am I going door to door in this neighborhood, I'm going to follow up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to send one more text because people aren't coming just because I evangelize faith technicality. They're coming because I evangelize by faith. Do I have any help tonight? Everybody say passion. Passion. And passion is what uh, Paul said, Pastor, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 11, when he said, Now, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Yeah. We persuade men. With passion. Yeah, with passion. Persuading, knowing the terror of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, I purposely persuade men. Now, this word persuade is key. Yeah. I don't just throw them a partner car. Because I bumped into them at McDonald's. Y'all are quiet. Come on, man. Amen. But instead of just throwing them a partner card, amen, and a nice leaflet that I bought at Lifeway on Amazon, the seven things you should know and tell them, read that, and I hope everything turns out okay. No, with great passion, we have a conversation. Come on. We engage. We persuade. Yes, we get on a Zoom call, a call by which we won't get in trouble by a pastor for being on that call. And we have a cup of coffee and we walk them through. I mean, the SAT, the SAT author is in the house. The salvation man himself. Amen. And, and we take that book and we take that electronic vehicle and, and we, we take them through the questions and we say, listen, the conference starts on Wednesday. Come Are on. you coming Wednesday? Well, I got to work Wednesday. We persuade men. What about Thursday? Come on. Uh, I'll still be. I got third shift Thursday. Okay, what time you get off Friday? 
What do, what do you say we meet for coffee Friday afternoon? And uh, I tell you what, don't even worry about driving to church. I'll pick you up, same gender. I'll pick you up, and we'll ride in together, man. And I just, I got a colloquium of books so I'm going to give you the, you. the list goes on and on because, nephew, what are we doing now? We are persuading, persuading men because a building is as good as having people in it. Amen. What's it for? Cafes don't win people. No. Hey man, we just got a hundred sanitation score back in Charlotte, and that's awesome. That happened last week. But but listen, yo, if nobody knows that you got the best fried chicken in Charlotte, yeah. Come on, Sister Maria, she'll be here sometime this week. Nobody knows you got all those wonderful things. How are they going to take advantage of it? And we can no longer put that burden on the man of God. Is that tonight? Everybody say we persuade men. Pastor, I'm going to move through this because cause creates passion. If you're writing, cause creates passion. What, what, what is that, Cassie? When we are excited about solving a problem. Come on. When you're excited about solving the problem of the blight in your community, of the young lady who could keep her virginity right around the corner this summer in this neighborhood if you get to her first. If you get to her before the devil gets to her this summer, Amen. she could be clean. She could be able to get saved early. I'm talking about the 13-year-old who at a certain point could come to y'all summer camp right here, right? Because you got to her first. So the first thing's first, and his lesson is to understand is that cause. Are y'all still here? Cause creates passion. 1 Samuel 17 and 9, just write it down. David said, amen, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Why did he beat Goliath? Because he had passion, but watch this, he solved a problem. Goliath was a problem. You are surrounded by Goliath. Is this all right? You're surrounded by problems, man. I know some poverty out here. I saw it coming in. I know there's some sick people out here. I, I, me and Brother Pat was riding in, and I saw one guy in his wheelchair under a bridge. I said, my God, right? But with great passion, we persuade. Yeah. There's that word again. We persuade. Am I okay tonight, Pastor? We persuade. So I, I'm not just going to give him that beautiful card, that bifold, and tell him, fold it up, put it in your pocket. No, I'm, I'm going to say, listen, man, what are you doing? Hey, man, James, do you have a meal? Can I give you some food? Yeah. I'm meeting your need. Yeah. And then can you come to church with me on our way to church? I give you a sandwich. We can eat it in the car. And right at about 7 o'clock, we'll go in for prayer and praise and worship. And we'll be together tonight. And listen, you sit with me all night long. I got you. Come on. I'm taking you home after this. Yo, this family business tonight. Somebody say amen. amen. Is there not a cause? Well, but in order to do that, Revelations, or rather Romans 12 and 11, we're going to move faster tonight. We can't be lazy. The Bible says never be lazy, but work hard. Never be lazy, but do what? Work hard and serve the Lord. How? Oh, come on, y'all going to help me teach this. How you going to serve them? Enthusiastic. That's right. Serve the Lord with gladness, the Bible says. What is that enthusiasm and gladness? Y'all, that is a type of faith. Yeah. I'm telling you how I know what you're in faith about is based on what you are enthusiastic about. I know that's the case. Everybody here that, amen, believes you receive a new car, if I got on a little binge tonight talking about you're going to drive and you're going to drive well and you can ready to have that car any Woo! <laughs> you would be what? You'd be enthusiastic about that because I, I stepped on something that you're passionate about. I stepped on something that you believe in, and you believe in it because it's something that's going to benefit you. But at a certain point, we got to grow to a place to where we understand that the things we do for the kingdom of God, who has a commission, only what you do for Christ is going to last. That young lady that you get to first, that young man that you get to first before he becomes a gang member, yeah. right? 
But in order to do that, amen, I can't be lazy, but I got to work hard and serve the Lord. Enthusiastic, Pastor, you were talking about this new grace ministry ministry that we have, man, God, that you helped me get, gave the first seed, and was such a great mentor with me on that as well. But I got to be honest, y'all, I had a moment once it all got finished up, because pretty soon we're going to take in our first residence there, and I think I shared this with you. And I started talking about CEOing all these ministries, and I had just how much work that's really going to take. Yeah. Like, that's work. that's work. True story. I was on the phone with a young lady just this afternoon who would be a tremendous candidate for the Grace House and, and just, and how confused her mind was and, and what she was wading through and, and how she would come on board with what I'm saying. Then she would fall off. And, you know what I mean, Pastor? And she'd come on board. It's nobody that's watching tonight. This is discreet enough. But she would fall off. She's not a member of our church yet. But I understand when, by the time we finish up, she said, well, can you just spend at least an hour with me a week? My God. Just helping me come through. What? Work. That somebody's going to have to willing to do. And I got to be honest with you, y'all, the senior pastors, they can't do that all the time. Sheep, don't forget this, be gay. Sheep. I, I, I need a seasoned sister to say, oh, I got it from here, pastor. I get on Zoom with her an hour a week. I take her to Starbucks. Amen. That's right. Enthusiastically, passionately, not just doing it. Amen. Paul said, don't do it with eye service. Yeah, that's Colossians good. chapter 3, that's don't good. do it because we're that you really own. I tell my leaders all the time, own your business. You're on, are you owning, Reggie, are you owning the youth ministry? Are you owning it? Amen. Come on, because we should be looking at a dashboard. We should not have our hands in all of that. We should just be looking high level saying, all right, that's working. Yep, that's looking good. Yep, this is all. Oh, man, awesome, boy. All microphones are popping right. All cameras doing what they want to do. And you just sticking your head in. Oh, yeah, that sound. That smells good. Whoever's doing the cooking, are y'all doing that? But the revelation, or seeing it, the lazy and unenthusiastic about the things of God. And I'm going to give you a news flash. If you'll get on fire about the things of God, God will get on fire about your things. Revelation knowledge. It's no such thing as flesh that's broke. Amen. There ain't no broke. Man, can you say it one more man? When you're after the things of God. I'm okay, Pastor, tonight. There is no broke doing the will of God. What if you became, and I shared this with my ministry not long ago, so on fire about your so many people in, in the division. You leading up grows so much that he has to put you on full time. Could you leave your job? Make you a proposition. Make you an offer that you cannot. And do I have any help? room yet. Yes, now, Pastor, I promise you, me and you are brothers with the same genes, and I think you got the anointing on you. This is amazing. The man of God got up there and started talking about the hot now sign earlier. <laughs> I want you all to understand, and you all know I'm a man of integrity, but Pastor, we need to have their hot, hot now sign. On. <laughs> Sister Gina, I did not write that tonight. It was like last week sometime. Ministries need to have. And see, God, even in our just comments, even when we just doing briefings, is it, you, you guys getting this? To my young ladies, when your man of God is just talking, God is talking. He's casting vision. When, when you got to catch it, that's right, say cool. When he just up here saying, boy, oh boy, if I just had somebody that would do thus and so. And, and, and if he has to say, it's quiet, you should say, I missed it. Uh, that's right. yes, yes. If he's got to say, ain't nobody, come on, ain't nobody saying, I missed it. That got, relation came through because God.
God in the mouth of two or three witnesses even tonight, and I'm getting ready to show you Bible for the hot now sign. I'm going to show you scripture. Have we got a problem? Are there any? more chairs left. No, brothers, can you stand up, please, and give your seat to a young lady? Y'all, I apologize. We, you know, we, we getting out of here soon. Y'all know we building a dome just right over here, but can y'all just help us out a little bit today? I know we got to go to five services, pray for pastor's body, that the Lord strengthen him till we, till we get through this building project. And we've been debt free. We all over Houston now. We on TV daily, and y'all know you going on daily television in Houston. Oh, I wish I had some help and beyond. Somebody say amen. Amen. But, no, but, but, but daily TV don't grow a ministry. No. No, no. I know it don't because I've been on it for years. Amen. amen. De ministries grow, thank you, Pop, when people get excited about where they're feeding. Yeah. Past the goal. That, that, that's when the ministry grows. I mean, I, I had that epiphany. I said, man, I'm doing all this. I'm all over there. I'm on the internet. I'm on this. I'm on that. I'm on every day, six days a week. Now in different states. Amen. That doesn't grow a church. You know what grows a church? The church. What you pastor preached three years ago? We're the church. We are. We're the church. Yeah. We grow the church. Amen. But it comes there, first lady, it comes through much effort. It comes through people putting their hands to the plow. Pastor, I got a few more minutes tonight. I want you all to see this over in 1 Samuel 21 and verse number 1. <clears throat> like this, this is, this is, uh, 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 Rondi, uh, the, um, Minister Rondi, this is the, the passion the disposition that the people of God need to have. Now, when you read the Bible, when, when the Bible starts talking about bread, in many cases, it is referring to as a, or being a type of a person, all right? So, you know, when Jesus wants to multiply us, sometimes he'll break us. He'll break our way of thinking. He put those loaves in his hand, he breaks it, he breaks your paradigm, takes you to another level, amen? This is my body. Bread, body. Y'all got that? So Jesus' body was what? Broken. So am I safe to say that it's healthy doctrine to assume that in some cases, not all, but in some cases when the Bible mentions bread, we could use it as a type of a person and niece what their disposition should be. All right? They should, they, there's a certain disposition a person should share. I hope y'all get this revelation because I'm going to slow walk you through it. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel 21 and verse number 1, I won't be much longer, that David went to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered Ahimelech the priest, The king sent me on a mission and said to me, No one is to know anything about the mission that I'm sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me in a certain place. Look at verse number three. Now then, what do you have on hand? Ask your neighbor, what do you have on hand? Tell them, no, what do you have to offer the kingdom of God? Ask them, what's your assignment? <laughs> and David gets the answer. <laughs> Pastor, he says, the, the priest says, David says to the priest, give me what? Five loaves of bread, five, number of grace, power of God. Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you can find. But the priest answered David and said, I don't have any ordinary bread. Somebody say, I'm not ordinary bread. I'm not ordinary bread. Say it again, I'm not ordinary bread. I'm not ordinary. Your pastor ought to be saying, I don't have any ordinary members. My God. I don't have any ordinary bread. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I got people around me that's just as on fire as I am. I, I don't have any ordinary musicians. My musicians are the best in the city of Houston. I don't have an ordinary praise and worship leader. No. And we don't. <laughs> Amen. 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 I don't have an ordinary uh, a senior women that to teach the younger women how to be domestic, how to manage their home. Because I don't have time to teach all the younger women how to be domestic, how to manage their home. I, I don't have any ordinary ladies in my ministry. Are you all getting this? 
So he said, give me five loaves of bread, whatever you can find. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, however, there is some consecrated people here. There is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from women. Is there anybody in the house that has kept yourself right, kept yourself usable, kept yourself upstanding so that when the man of God calls your number, you can come forth and say, I have been consecrated for this work. Here I am. Send me, pastor. I will go and win somebody. I don't stand with everybody. Somebody say amen. We don't want with every pastor because the only woman we're sleeping with is our wives. Somebody say amen. amen. We don't run with every pastor because every dime that comes to the house of God that belongs to the house of God stays in the house of God. I don't know how you could get quiet on that point. You are not a part of ordinary churches and if we are not ordinary you should not be ordinary bread. Lift your hand and give them praise in the house of God. You ought to be outstanding. Outstanding. You ought to be about the business of the kingdom. Yes, sir. Romans 12 and 11. You ought not be lazy. Kingdom business. Do working with your hands. How many more prayer calls do we need to do to get somebody to work with their hands? Mentoring is not so you can be mentored. Mentoring is so you can go and make men. I don't have no help in this church. Are you all still here? Somebody said, we're not ordinary bread. David replied, indeed, women have been kept from us. As usual, whenever I set out, the men's bodies are holy, even on missions that are not holy. <laughs> Good God Almighty. How many of y'all know we don't watch any radio R movies with a woman taking her shirt off, even on a down Monday, even on missions that are not holy? Somebody say amen. The only thing we're doing is watching a Magnificent Seven. And if that's what we're doing, am I doing okay tonight? Come on, man. Come on, let's close this out momentarily. Stay with me now. So he says, we are not doing anything. How much more so today? So watch this, hot noun sign. So the priest gave him the consecrated bread since there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day that it was taken. Good God Almighty. You know what kind of bread we ought to have in the house of God? Hot bread. Somebody say amen. My pastor doesn't have the aching void of underachievement. He don't have to turn on the sign even though he can if he want to because the power of God just won't stop because everybody showed up being hot now. Everybody was hot bread. Everybody was on fire. Oh, can I say it the Bible way? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You ought to hop up on your feet and get real glad right now and turn your hot sign on and give them great praise in the house of God. My God. I wish I had some help here tonight. Come on, man of God. Come on, take your seat. If somebody say, I'm passionate. I'm passionate. Somebody say, I'm passionate. I'm passionate. Hot now signs, then, if you're writing, are indic indicative of your level of dedication. Come on. That's what they are. Is this okay, Pastor? Woo. Indicative of your level of dedication. No, oh, man of God, you would have knocked it out the park. Woo. I'm telling you, man of God, because this is what God's been ministering to me. I mean, he's just been giving this to me because that's what hot bread was all about. And when we had to replace any bread, you know, when somebody got blessed up, the next person that got in place, they was just as hot. Yeah, so yeah, Are y'all getting this tonight? What, what, what a compliment. I'm so pleased with Sister Cassie and Brother Pat and, and Pastor and just what y'all doing. And, and when Sister Cassie had to come on down, down to Houston, just did a dynamic job setting us up in Charlotte. Isn't that, isn't that right? Amen. But, but then look at Sister Kim coming forth just as hot. Come on. When one bread has to go and do something else, the next bread that come in, come on, come on, y'all gonna get this ought to be ju ju just as hot. Didn't miss, oh, I wish I had some help. Didn't miss a beat. My concern with letting say cool go is I just don't have anybody just as hot. That'd be my concern, man of God. I'd be my. I gotta be honest with you. I know he has overwhelming potential, but I need somebody just as hot. Pastor, is this okay tonight? 
turn your hot now sign on and keep it on. I don't even have to go into Krispy Kreme because the pastor did it so well earlier, but that's the revelation of Krispy Kreme, guys. Y'all, what made them popular, what made them stand out from Dunkin' Donuts, Duck Donuts, and any other donut shop is the red sign every so often will come on hot now, amen, and then people know to get in the drive-thru. And how many of you know if you turn your hot now anointing on, hallelujah, the anointing is going to draw people to this church. It's going to make people come in here and they not gonna want to go anywhere else because you are hot now you you're hot you're hot bread you're hot bread oh lift your hand and give them a shout in this place and turn your hot now sign back on because he, he can't do it himself i say he can't do it himself is it all right if we dedicate the building this week but that's wonderful but pop gould said it so well he said god's not gonna live here that's how he preached my dedication. He said, God's not going to live here. God's going to be here because you're here. Yeah. God's going to be here because you're on fire. Yeah. Amen. The fire is here every week because you bring the fire. I wish I had some help. And we ought not be stirring it up. Hallelujah. We ought to come to the door on fire. We ought to come to the door pumping the anointing. Come to the door wondering who's going to get healed today. Who's going to get rich today. Who's going to break through today. Who's going to experience more today. Somebody atmosphere right and give them a hot now and praise. Let me prepare the way for Pastor Gordon. Up. Give them a hot now and praise in Jesus' name. Try and say I'm hot now. Come on, take your seat. I'm just preparing the way. I'm John the Baptist. I just, I just want to help out. Somebody say we, we need to turn our sign back on. And what is that revelation, Pastor Rondi? The revelation is seen in this text because David was always hot. David was on fire. Y'all, David was on fire that the priest was afraid of him. Do y'all understand that? David was always ready. If you keep reading in that same text, we don't have time. It's beyond this message tonight. But in that same chapter 21, David saw a dude from a man, one of the, I believe the Edomite camps, one of the enemy camps. And when he saw that dude, because David was such a warrior, he got strategic. He asked the king, he said, you got any weapons around here? You got anything I can put my hands on? And guys, guess what weapon he found? He found Goliath's sword. Are you all listening to me? Guys, the same weapons y'all used to whip the devil and win back then to get out of the other church over here, the same faith you use, the same weapons you use to take the giant down, go back, get them same weapons, get that same passion, get that same fire, and turn the hot now sign on and win Houston for Jesus. Win. Oh, man, I wish I was in church tonight. Win Houston for the kingdom of God. Somebody say same faith. Man, if I can have faith to get $100,000, I can have faith to get 100 new people in the kingdom of God. If I can have faith to have a baby when my pastor ministers to me, I can have faith to bring in baby Christians into the kingdom. It's quiet on that point. I, if I can have faith to receive houses in Kingwood, I can have faith to bring people in the house of God. When you come in the house of God, walk. Night. Come on, take your seat. Hallelujah. I'm going home on this. We got to be dedicated. Dedicated to the things of God. Passion is the equivalent, synonymous, June, with the word dedication. That's what passion is. So I thought I'd pay homage to two of my mentors tonight, these generals in the faith. Boy, I could start crying off of that. And I really mean it too. Precious man of God, my pastor Ron. And, you know, he's always teaching. He's always showing you how to do something. He's always modeling. And so he, he did his kingdomnomics and hit me to these charts. He hit me some charts. So I said, man, I'm going to open up his Bible study with a chart. And y'all keep your chart because 
I might fluctuate. I got more word than I can teach over the next three days. So pray for me. The Lord give me a zero in approach. So I preach what's appropriate. But uh, Sister Biggers, tan, tan those out. Say cool. Pastor, it's okay if I take oh, yeah. a few more minutes. But um, Pop, when he did our dedication years ago, he talked about the four D's. Amen. That every ministry needs. And that's how I want to wrap up tonight. Amen. And, and this is, you know, not his exact points, if I'll be honest with you, but every year at the start of the year, I create my own spinoff of the four Ds. Okay. I take his four points, his four honing subjects, and I get my own scriptures, <clears throat> kind of get my own revelation, and speak to our church through the lens by which what they need now. Mm. And so if, if you'll take this and you'll keep it as my gift to you, um, credit to, to Pop Ghoul for the concept, amen, and some scriptures I added, I think it'll be a blessing to this ministry because ultimately, if we talk about church development and growth, how are you handling the things of God? These are the four categories, of which I will not get to all four of them tonight, that we need to be honing in on. If we do this, we're going to bust at the seams. If we do this, people are going to get healed. If we do this, people are going to get delivered. If we do this, we will officially be about the Father's business. Amen. And that's what we're in the earth to do, Bishop. That's what we should be doing. We should, this is all about the Father's business. That's all it is, Pastor. You know, it's all about kingdom expansion and growth. And that's what I love about your pastor, because he's always teaching so that people can come into the kingdom. He does it so well. Amen. Does it with our mutual leaders every Tuesday. And I really mean that. And I appreciate it. And, and, and is always ministering and growing us. Are you all still here? <clears throat> so Pop gave us four dedications. Amen. As we dedicate your church. And I can't wait to officially dedicate it on Friday night or whatever pastor says. And mom will be here tomorrow night. But let's look just through this briefly. And let's wrap up on this tonight and then keep it and we'll pick it back up maybe this weekend, depending on what the Lord says. But number one, we should be dedicated to God. That's what the man of God said. We should be dedicated to God. Your pastor's favorite scripture, Matthew 6 and 33. That's how we're going to wrap Bible study up tonight. But seek ye first the what? Kingdom of God. Now, I'm going to tell you what's amazing about our churches is the fact that in many cases, and y'all hear this, God graced a lot of our members. And I'm going to tell you what he did. The Lord gave me revelation on this. For many of you in the room or watching online, he allowed you to have your stuff first. He really did. He gave you a house. He gave you a marriage. He gave you your baby when you couldn't have one. All those kinds of things. The Lord did that through the, the, the lens of grace. You know, many of us was barely saved, yet the Lord started blessing our socks off. We got supernatural words and knowledges and even more conferences and all those kinds of things. When God truly was not obligated to do that stuff, those were genuine sign wonders and miracles. That's, that's really what they were, right? And so I have a lesson I'm working on now called the obligation of the blessing. Mm. Because once you get blessed, there ought to be a spinoff effect. Yeah. There ought to be something that you're willing to do. Now, listen to me. God has blessed me so much. Pastor was right when he talked about the discreet nature of my wife and I. He knows the stuff the Lord has done for us just this year. God's blessed me so much, I just feel handcuffed to work for him. And it's not that he has to handcuff me, but because, quite frankly, I want to. But when I reflect on how much he did for me yeah. just this year, I can't go into every testimony. There were people I love that God kept alive for me. There were, there, were, there, were, there were acquisitions and things and other things that the Lord did for me that, quite frankly, I could have lived without, but the Lord just did it for me. It don't make no sense. My God. Pastor, I was in Hobby Lobby one day. I picked up a van. This is how powerful this testimony is. I looked at my sweet wife, dear, you remember this, and I said, dear, I believe I want a van. Will you help me tell this testimony? Four days later, what did the Lord do? He blessed me with a van, didn't he? He blessed me with a van. It didn't make no sense. The van just popped up. I wasn't studying no vans. I've been talking about raptors for the last four years. But here lies 
that van, Gabe, that's what you said, I heard you. <laughs> he gave me a van. I just drove that van to Florida. And, and, and I didn't get a note. I, I'm saying the van is 100% paid for. It has a TV in it. And the back lays down to a bed. and It's crazy. It's a limousine van. It's out of control. Are y'all getting this? So, Steph Biggers, I just feel this obligation, like, Lord, golly, is it anything else? And see, oh, you know, we can tell a little bit here and there, but I just, I, you know, I went shopping the other day, went to my tailor there, there in, in Raleigh, and I was just having a good time. And I walked through the door, and I see this 50% off sale that they were having. And would you know that all the gators was in my size? Y'all not catching hold of what I'm saying. Now, I could have paid full price for them because I can afford it full price, but God just loved me. He just, he just loved me. He just, he just said, man, Gabe, I just, I just love you. And I'm just going to do where You were there with me, weren't you? And God just loved me. He just gave it to me. Don't pass it. Don't make no sense. Got more shoes than I could wear in a year. Don't make no sense. But Cassie, God just, he just loved me. So I start thinking about that. I'm still on point number one, first lady, with this whole concept of seeking you first. God, in many cases, blessed many of us before we ever ran after him. Yeah. Because Pop Hagen used to say, it's the dinner bell. Yeah. Signs. Signs, wonders, and miracles got you in the kingdom. You had a baby when, in many cases, you all but had no womb. But it got you in the kingdom. So how much more on the back end, on the back end. Come on. can I fill up two rows? Come on. Seek ye first. It gets quiet on that point. Seek ye first. We'll deal with this a little bit more on, on Sunday probably. But the first dedication is dedication to God. The second dedication is dedicated to pastor. I can't wait to talk about that. I'm just setting you up. His vision is my vision. I love Luke 12, 16 and 12, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? How many people in here, you, you want to be a deck of millionaire? You have no problem admitting that. Okay, very good. Now, with that in mind, the clause in your contract in the kingdom to get there is to be so passionate about somebody else's success that God flips it and puts it all on you. That's the clause in your contract. Ephesians 6, I think 8 or 12, you look it up. But what you make happen, somebody else, God will make happen for you. Now, this is my pastor. I don't even say that comedically. I really mean that. This is my pastor. If I was in Houston, I would be so on fire about the things he is doing and particularly with the sign, wonder, and miracle of this beautiful dome God just moved him in. Like, I wouldn't need anything else to demonstrate to me that God is with him. I wouldn't. And I would say, Pastor, what can I do to drive your vision passionately? How much, and then this might, would be my question. How much margin, you should be writing this down, and leverage do I have to make a decision? Can you tell me what my level of decision making is? Because I want to take your vision and run with it. I don't want to have to aggravate you on a Tuesday evening at 6 and ask you one more question. Give me the boundaries of my decision making until we meet again. And if we're going to meet once every two weeks, I'll update you based off of the left. If I'm a finance guy, do I get to spend up to $1,500? Is that my, my spending limit? If that's my spending limit, give it to me. And whatever uh, event you throwing out here, I'm going to make sure that I budget uh, 500 for a food truck. I'm going to budget 200 for decorations. And I'm not just going to call the vendors and take whatever deal they give me because I'm as passionate about your vision as I would be about mine. Yes, I'm going to get two or three quotes. You got it, Sekou. And then I'm going to beat them up on the price because I'm managing your money like I manage my money. Come on, man, God. Because your money is my money. His vision is my vision. Can we find a hot now piece of bread? Somebody in here, it could be a gapper. Some of you young people, man, you are the right ones to work your way right into a job. You can, what about becoming the pastor's first assistant? 
Make yourself so valuable that he says to his wife one fateful night, I got to put sister so-and-so on staff. I got seven minutes. I'm going to use every bit of it. I got to put sister so-and-so on staff. My God! I see some hands going in the air. I see you, Diamond. <laughs> I got I to have her. She is killing it. I, it. I don't even want, what What's some of the corporations in this city? Throw them out there. Give, give me two or three businesses in Houston. Yeah, just throw it out there. Yeah, Oracle, okay. I don't want Oracle to have sister so-and-so. Tesla, I don't want Tesla. Y'all, y'all, y'all like the corporate capital of the world. The medical centers down here, I, I don't want them to have her. My God. I want her to be my chief operating officer. She is so dynamic. I need her. <laughs> God Almighty. She is a catalyst. But she's a catalyst because she's passionate. And she walks, come on, what's our text tonight? Prudently. When she comes into the house of God. <laughs> she's prudent with my vision. When she comes into the house of God. Pastor Rogers, don't cover it all tonight. Save some. Dedicated to God, dedicated to my pastor, dedicated to evangelism. Thank you, Pastor Gould. I'm just going to go and reach people for Jesus. I'm going to get people saved and be on fire about it and love doing it. Not, not doing it because I'm checking a box. Not doing it because pastor's going to ask me, have you gotten a disciple yet? I'm doing, man, I'm doing this because I'm a Christian. This is my Christian duty. This is what I do. Do you know we evangelize? Aiken Void of Underachievement. Amen. Uh, a couple of Sundays ago, two of the couple visitors that was in my church, probably out of eight visitors, four out of the eight were people I personally got to the church that day. Aiken Void of Underachievement. But she began. He can't do it himself. He's not even supposed to do it himself. Why should we leave the word to wait on tables? Is evangelism a form of waiting on tables? Yes, for a senior pastor it is. Yes. That's not even his job, primarily. He can do it as a Christian duty, as the Lord tells him to minister. But it's the people that should be throwing folk in this place by the groves. I'm down to five minutes. We'll pick up more. But dedicated to evangelism, I'm finished. And then dedicate it to what? Each other. Guys, understanding the commonwealth. We'll cover more. Will you keep your chart? Understanding the commonwealth. I want my brother or sister to win. We skip over Psalm 133, Pastor. I don't have time to cover it all tonight. But he said how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. But don't stop reading because that's where I will command the blessing. Yeah. We get on one accord to win people for Jesus, to have praise team A, B, and C, because we got 15 meetings a week. Guys, the blessing has been commanded. Overflow is in the house. And I'm, 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 I'm tapping you into how to really increase, how to really be blessed. And if you are not a Levite that works in the church, because everybody's not going to work in the church, guess what God's going to do? He's going to fill your individual coffers. He's going to give you the best job with Oracle. Because <laughs> you're, you're a marketplace guy. So he's going to use you in the marketplace, but then he's going to give you a $250,000 salary a year. Are you getting that? Or a $320,000 salary a year. I'm closing. I saw somebody over here grab it. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's going to happen, and you're going to be uh, what Luke 8 calls one of the many others. Y'all know what's so profound about the many others? They were rich without the persecution. Yeah. <laughs> the boys was getting beat up. All kinds of stuff happening to them, but they wanted the what? And you all don't even have to turn me up loud. I can, this is a nice echo in here. I can almost talk without a mic. They was one of the many others. They were, they were just blessed. Guys, read your Bible. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible calls him a rich disciple. But he was rather a secret disciple. But he was a wealthy man. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Yeah. So he over there funding the ministry of Jesus from behind. Knocking them down. Winning. Without the persecution. It's quiet. 
So what if you just became one of the people that worked prudently in the house of God? That's my lesson tonight. When you come into the house, I'm closing. Men of God, you can play softly. When you come into the house, walk prudently. Be enthusiastic. Be on fire about the things of God. And we're going to keep teaching this. Because there is no other way. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the next couple of lessons, if, should the Lord say the same. And let me be clear, if on one of those nights we come in, God be like, don't preach, just minister to people, I'm fine with that too. Amen? So I, I have no, no agenda except God's agenda. I really mean that. That's from the heart. But I'm saying that to say, during my tenure here, and I know Pastor Gould is going to knock it out the park tomorrow night, but during my tenure here, guys, I want to light such a fire for people to be so passionate about the things of God because he already blessed you in reverse. So what do you think is going to happen when you really seek the kingdom? He going to bless your socks off. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just going to come in by the groves. You'll say something one day. I told you that story about the van. I said, man, I, did, I would like to have a van. I, don't even, I wasn't studying no van. There, have I been talking about vans? No. I said, man, that'd be cool to have a van. I said, I should buy, this is what I told my wife, I should buy this as a model. The next week, I had a limited edition conversion van sitting in my lot. I boast only in the Lord. You got a pastor with three and four Mercedes Benzes? Does that make you say to yourself, gosh, Pastor, you mind if I just come out there while you studying in your office? I tell you what, man of God, you go in your office, I'll just sit in the sanctuary and pray Amen. while you study. Amen. You know what minister, happens to minister say cool because he'll just be around the church when I'm there. I'll be in there praying, and, and sometimes I'll say, what do I do, say cool? Say cool, come on in here. Here, get a piece of communion. Come on, let's pray together. Come on, help lay hands with me for the people in the prayer box. And then what I always ask Hiku, what do you want from the Lord? <laughs> now let's commune over what you want. You got audience like that with a powerhouse? Yes, a powerhouse. Yes, dedicated to my pastor, a powerhouse. Yes, 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 so excited about the vision of my pastor. Boy, if I lived in Houston, oh my God. All this dynamic stuff. Saw him talk to a lady one night who didn't have an organ in her body working or something. And God told him it's the left one. And she went to the doctor. Y'all remember that night? Yeah, yeah, you do. Because I was here. And that's, that was the organ that wasn't acting right. And where is she tonight? What's the revelation? I don't understand it. I'm praying I'm asking God. The revelation is. Mm -hmm. Makes you walk away. I don't know. Pastor Ben's talking about the spirit of stupid lately. I think he's on to something. Some things don't make no sense, but back to the lesson. Walk prudently when you come into the house of God. I've used my time. I'm a man of my word. I want you to stand to your feet if you don't mind.